Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining me here today. Would love for you just to give us a brief introduction on how long you've been with HMP and what you actually do in the company. All right. Uh, of course, Scott Welch, HSC field rep rotator here in West Texas. I've been with HMP for a total of 19 and a half years in the same role. Started my career with HMP offshore, came to land shortly or late numerous years later but i've been here here in west texas for eight of those years so i say been around been around with hmp for a while so you did hfc offshore too that's what is yes. that what you said yes nice man oh how different are those environments and and some of the watch outs maybe some similarities and some big differences what's one of your big big differences that you saw offshore to working on land rigs now well in the offshore side of the world of course you have a few more entities to deal with you have coast guard you have bessie uh which are very similar to the blm texas railroad association you know we still dealt with osha offshore uh, but you did have the other entities that you had to abide by their rules regulations as well so that's Basically, the biggest thing as far as safety wise or H and P wise, definitely two different divisions. But at the end of the day, the same outcome. We still go off the same standards and guidelines, the same procedures. So, uh, you know, not a whole lot different in the world of the safety. Just a lot more entities to deal with. A few more personnel on the offshore locations due to uh, also having roustabout crews out there working cranes, unloading boats. Plus, then you have your floor crew. So, uh, you know, a little bit. Little different positions out there, a few more positions, uh, but basically at the end of the day, same accomplishment. Hey, well, you know, you and I, we were talking earlier, everybody who's in this industry understands the importance of safety and in every industry. Uh, companies work best when their people are taken care of and they go home healthy. They go home the same way they went to work. And so I'm just curious if you just share maybe a story or an experience that has significantly impacted the way that you approach HSC or, or, or the suggestions you would make being an employee of HP for almost 20 years. The probably the biggest thing, of course, before coming into the drilling side of the world with HP, um, I was a emergency medical technician and worked on an ambulance. And I did that for 11 years. And for many years, you know, I thought my job was just to take care of somebody after the incident, accident, whichever it may be. As the years went on, I realized that I just, I didn't want to work on somebody after the accident. I wanted to help them before the accident. That's huge. And so a lot of brainstorming, a lot of talking back and forth between the family, you know, coming now from having a job that I'm at home when I need to be, I'm just around the corner to now being away from my family, you know, that was a big decision making. Am I going to be willing to take that, you know, the 14 days away from my family, miss the birthdays, miss the holidays. And they all agreed that that's where I needed to be. I needed to help people before they got hurt, not just after they got hurt. Yeah. So that really, I mean, you know, we talk so much about SIP potential and SIP mitigation. And I mean, it sounds like your desire even in pursuing this industry was saying, hey, how can I help stop people from getting hurt to help them in that process as opposed to having them just come on the back end and help keep them alive, right? Um, that's really, and I appreciate, appreciate, man, your heart and all you do. I'm actually married to a pediatric ER nurse. And so we, we, we know that life well. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I could do what she does and what a lot of healthcare professionals have to do. And, taking care of people in their moments of need. It's definitely challenging. Yeah. Well, being that, that you're out there on site, and maybe you could just explain to, to me and to people if they're tuning in to watch a little bit about what your objective is. Why Why are you even on site? Um, I think you shared me you've got six rigs, six areas that you cover, right? And and yeah. so what's the purpose? Why are you there? Uh, for us, the biggest thing is not to be the safety cop out there, right? But, you know, we don't want to roll up and everybody see that white pickup truck and they go, oh, Lord, we got to start working safe. We want 
be the guy that they can come to when they do have a safety concern or they have a suggestion. So, you know, no doubt most of our, or a lot of our day and a lot of our work time is over audits, inspections, keeping our the rigs safe, the guys safe. But it's also going out and just talking to them and listening to them, letting them know that you actually do actively care about them. And what can I do or what can we do as a safety group to help you better? Yeah. Hey, that, that really does tie in. Well, one of the things I was curious about is how that you're there with, with the crews and you're working and you don't want to just be the safety cop. What do you do to help kind of build that culture of safety among them? Especially since, you know, these guys and gals are working in high risk, high potential danger environments. Um, I'm sure you've got some ideas or, or, or tactics that you use to, to help develop that culture. Well, of course, one of the biggest things I try to do is remember to listen as much as I talk. When you come to somebody and all you do is talk to them or talk at them, uh, a lot of times they, they build that wall, that barrier against you. And, and of course, they, whether they resent you or, or hate to see you come or whatever. But when you actually sit down and you talk to them, you find out about your families, you know, why are you here? You know, what, what is your reason for coming to the oil field? You know, and usually they'll tell you because it's the only job I can make any money at. I've got to support my family. I've got to pay for my kids' college or whatever it may be. It lets them know that you do actually care about them. It's not just a, a tactic to get them to listen to you, but you finally, you, you start to lo- learn these guys. And then when the next time you see them, they tell you about their hunting trip they went on or they, you know, or they tell you something that they did at home or even at work that probably wasn't the safest thing to do. They, they end up opening up to you a lot more. Especially when they realize like, Hey, you're a person too. And you actually, you actually care. You're not just here to check a box on a list, but you actually care about me. Uh, let me ask you this, man. As a veteran, if somebody was thinking about wanting to get into HS, the HSC field, how would you encourage them? What would you recommend them to do to try and make the biggest or a, a significant impact into their job? Well, and of course, over the years, I've had that opportunity with a lot of individuals that have come to me and asked me. Um, you know, my first question is, why? Do you feel like you would want to be a safety guy? You get a lot of different answers. Uh, of course, some of them are like, hey, I want to ride around in the company truck and eat sandwiches at McDonald's and sit with the company man all day or whatever. Uh, and those are the guys that, are, you know, they, they want a job. They want to make an income, but their heart's really not into the safety outside of it. But you do get those certain select individuals that will tell you, you know, listen, I mean, I care. You know, I try to I be, a, I'm involved in all the jobs out here. I bring up safety discussions, um, and that's where it starts. I mean, you've got to have the heart for it to begin with. Uh, it's not just something that you just dive into. It's not a, a, it's not something you can go from being one person to the other. Yeah. When I ask them, is this something that you would take to the house as well? I mean, it, if you won't do it safe at home, will you do it safe at work? And it, a lot of them were like, oh, you know, no, I, I still we'd eat in flip flops and shorts and no safety glasses. Uh, you know, so it, it's it's definitely one of those things. It has to be in your heart to do it. It's not just a again. It may look good on paper. You may think this is an easy job. It's not. It's very time consuming. It's nonstop. We're on twenty four seven. Yeah. When they get to go lay down in the evening time, I'm waiting on a phone call. You have to be able to to manage your time. You between your drive time between the rigs, your case management, your investigations, your audits, yeah. inspections. So it's yeah. it's not just riding around the truck and eating a McDonald's sitting with the company, man. It's it's there's a lot more involved in it. And a lot of times when you explain it to them what your actual job is, because they don't know what your job is, uh, they they are, they turn around. No, I don't want your job. Or then, like I say, you have that one guy or those two guys that are like, man, that's, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. I do like that you said they got to have a heart for it. I think that's even just in your career path. It is. You got to have somebody that actually cares. is going to treat people like people and not just a, a machine or um, not going to be able to connect with people out there. So I'm curious, 
uh, talking about taking this home. You know, you can't have somebody who is preaching safety on the job, but then they're driving home, going 50 over, and then they get home. And, you know, like you said, I think you said weed eating flip flops and shorts. Uh, is there anything you would say your family gets tired of you saying that's maybe safety related at home? Of course, my kids always hear me I tell them, work smarter, not harder, right? And I mean, it's, it's an old saying, and it's, it's been around for a long time. But I try to reference it back to the safety aspect, not just the, the short court and the shut, shortcut part of it, but the safety aspect of it. So I give them scenarios. Okay, so if, if you do it this way and you get hurt, have you saved any time or did you even accomplish the job at that point? And a lot of, of course, I have five children all together and uh, my youngest one still in high school. All the others are out and graduated and had their own families, but they, they all turn around and they say, you know, you're right. You know, I, I, I've got to, got to do it right. Or all I'm doing is working harder at, at the scenarios. Yeah. Dude, you're spot on. So I'm in Tulsa. We got snow. My kids have been out of school Monday, Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. So I'm at my limit of trying to work from home and manage them. They're at their limits of being bored. And so Wyatt, my son, want to get a sled down. We have some uh, garage shelves that mount up in the ceiling joists, you know. And he's like, yeah, can you get those? I'm like, I can't. You got to gotta get them yourself. I said, like, I need you to get the ladder and do it. And then he was quiet, so I yelled for him. I was like, Brighton, where's Wyatt? He's like, oh, he's climbing on your tool bits. And I'm like, tell him to come here now. And same thing. He's like, well, I can get up this quicker. I'm like, no, man, my tool bits can roll around. You can fall down. You think it's quicker. If something went wrong, it's actually going to be much longer. It's going to be a much bigger problem. The whole working smarter, not harder. Like it is smarter to slow down, do it the right way, follow whatever procedures. Again, in our house, we don't have any written procedures, but it's like, go get the ladder, man. Don't climb up on my tool bench just because you think you can reach it. Let me, let me ask you this too. Being that you have a, a, a wide breadth of responsibility and safety can cover so many different areas. I'm curious in your role how you have learned to balance the demand of getting everything done, but also safety, practicing what you preach kind of in your day to day right. job. Of course, it starts with being structural. Uh, of course, I was raised in the military family, was not in the military myself, but I was raised in a military family and I was taught at a very early age that, you know, if you're 10 minutes late, then you're actually 20 minutes late. You know, you, you have to plan your business and plan your time. So, you know, having a good getting plan is, uh, it's no different than going out and tripping BHA, right? Or, or picking up pipe. You got to have pre-job planning. So, you know, before you go lay down that night, have you a plan of what you're going to do that next day? You know, how long is it going to take me to get there? How long is it going to take me to do these audits or, or whatever it is and, and time your day out? Not always to say it's going to work that way. And the HSC side of the world, it can change in a matter of seconds. But you have a plan. And that way, at the end of the day, if everything goes according to plan, you do finish your work. You even may do extra work, which is fine. It saves you from the next day. Again, you don't want to wait till the last part of your hitch to start doing your work. You do your work every day. We have guidelines of what we are required to do, what we're asked to do. And so if, if you sit down and you pre-job plan, okay, well, I've got this, this, and this to do, and I've got this, this, and this coming up, how am I going to make this work? And I said, that's when you, you draw your plan out, you get your rope, your roadmap ready, and hopefully you can execute as you plan it. But you also, again, have to be very diverse to be able to take the change when it comes. Yeah. Got to be agile. That's a good word, man. Well, Scott, if, if you had one message. You wanted anybody within H and P or anybody on any of our sites, any of our rig work for us. If you could tell them anything about H and P's approach to safety, what would you want to tell them? Tell these guys, ladies out here. You know, as humans, we don't like change, right? And we see these new things roll out daily. But you know, as the years have gone on, we've we've taken things from one step to the next, and 
as humans, we get used to something, we get comfortable with something, and we don't like when something gets rolled out. The way I like to tell them is, you know, let's honor the person that that new rule or that new procedure got written for, or whether that person just got minorly hurt, seriously hurt, or possibly a fatality. We changed for a reason, and it was more than likely over an incident. And so let's honor that person and do it right. Man, that's gold. I appreciate that because you are right. I think anytime we add something new, it is in direct response to something that happened or something that could have happened. I'm, I'm going to take that to, to heart even just from our talk today. I appreciate that. But, uh, man, thank you so much for your time. I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and, you know, look forward to, to learning more from you, man. Now that I know I got a 20 year veteran that uh, I can reach out to when I got any HSC questions. I really appreciate it. Sounds good. And if I don't know where it's at, I'll know where to find it. That's the most important part. Okay. Thank you.